You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. The Cloud Native Computing Foundation, or CNCF, hosts critical components of the global technology infrastructure, including Kubernetes, Prometheus, and Envoy. CNCF serves as the neutral home for collaboration, bringing together the industry's top developers, end users, and vendors, and running the largest open source developer conferences. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another On the Road episode of the New Stack Makers. I'm Heather Joslin, Editor-in-Chief of the New Stack, and today we're coming to you from the floor of QCon plus Cloud Native Con North America here in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, today we're going to talk about Falco, which is an open source cloud native security runtime. Uh, Falco was donated to the CNCF uh, six years ago by Sysdig. Um, in this past February, it uh, reached graduation status, so congratulations to Falco. Um, we're going to talk to some of the team involved in, in that project now. Um, we're going to find out, you know, what was involved in that six-year journey to graduation and a bit more about Falco. What are the uses of Falco? What's next for the project? And we're joined by three folks from Sysdig today. Um, first, uh, Toma Labrusis. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about Sysdig and what you do there? Yeah, sure. Sysdig is a security company. We are helping us our users to secure their cloud infrastructures, for example, with cloud secure uh, posture management, with image scanning, uh, with a bunch of AI to spot the exact CVEs and threats they are facing. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have also ex uh, developed a runtime security tool called just Falco, like you said, and which is a base for uh, a secure agent we have to basically detect suspicious events that may happen in clusters, virtual machines, Linux servers, even if they are bare metals. And after that, react to these events in uh, Snap to be sure the platforms of our users are safe and continue to serve what, what they need to do. Okay, terrific. Um, and uh, we're also joined by Leonardo Grasso. Yeah, uh, Leonardo, I'm, can you tell us a little bit about what you do there? Yeah, uh, I am a Falco core maintainer, and also I am a, a tech leader manager of the open source open source engineering team at CISD. So basically, we we take care of Falco every day. We're also going to be joined by Luca Guerra. Can you tell us what you, what you do? Of course. Thanks for having me. Uh, I am a senior engineer at Sysdig, and I primarily work on Falco and uh, these, these associated projects, and uh, also on a lot of security aspects uh, and uh, uh, advancing security capabilities of Falco and of what we do at Sysdig. I think everyone's excited to, to get in this discussion, so let's get started. Um, first of all, what was the problem Falco was created to solve? Basically, in regular... Uh, security postures, people are scanning their images to detect CVEs, mm. so they can know which flaws they may face in their applications, but once the application is running in their platforms, what they are exactly doing, which are not supposed to happen, they don't know. Mm. And this is why Loris Dejuani, the founder of Seasing and our big boss, uh, he took his big experience as co-creator of Wireshark to create a tool able to collect all events that, have, that are happening inside the kernel, so the core mm -hmm. of the system. It, we, uh, the tool is in charge to collect them, enrich them with metadata for us humans to have more context, for example, uh, the pod name, pod name space, or else. And with all these uh, elements, all the events, Falco, the tool in, sh in that in situation, will be in charge to correlate these events with rules we provide and detect suspicious events that, uh, events that are not supposed to happen in production. Mm -hmm. So it's really different from the other systems that we are not doing uh, analysis, uh, static analysis like st of the code base of the images. We are, in, um, we are collecting events on, uh, on the fly, like a stream, and mm -hmm. we, are, we are trying to be as much as possible real time. We are a new stack reporter, Bruce Gain, has written about this project quite a bit, and he referred to it as a, a network of security cameras for your infrastructure. Can you tell us a little bit about how Falco works under the hood, the underlying technology? 
Of course, uh, Falco needs to read the events that come from your hosts, so from your Linux machine, for instance. To do that, uh, uh, Falco needs to interact with the kernels. That's, uh, of course, the lowest level of the operating system. And uh, in order to do this, uh, Falco historically has had the kernel module, uh, which, uh, which we currently still support uh, and support uh, pretty much all uh, versions that are commonly run in production. Thanks to the recent advancements uh, of the Linux kernel and technology, uh, we now support the eBPF. This uh, is great because it allows us to write uh, a software that interacts with the kernel that is much safer and uh, allows us to make the installation experience for a user much simpler because uh, installing a kernel module is far more complicated than installing a, a BPF probe in the newest version of the system. And this uh, is great for us because we don't receive that many requests from users that requiring assistance to install and we have been very happy in adopting this technology. So you mentioned older technology, newer technology. So, so even like legacy technology, uh, exactly, legacy yes. models. It's, uh, uh, it's stable. It's yeah. used in production. Yeah. We rely yeah. on it. Yeah. And so, and so we Falco wants to uh, to support it. Leonardo, do you have anything to say about about sort of the the under the hood, the the tech, the underlying technology? And eBPF is also if anyone, it, anyone who's watching this isn't aware of it, um, is is extended. Berkeley packet filter. It's yep. Yep. my my understanding of it is is it allows something to run in a privileged environment yeah. in the Linux kernel. Yeah. We can uh, think of a BPF like a virtual machine mm -hmm. that run code privileged code inside the kernel. Right. The particular thing is that the code is being verified before being injected into the kernel. Of yeah. course, there are some li limitations, but this allows to run safely code inside the, the kernel space. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, uh, Falco, as uh, Luca uh, told, uh, rely on this technology uh, for modern kernel, usually from 5.18, if I remember correctly, and uh, major version, we can use the compile once run everywhere technology. technology. What prompted um the company to to apply to apply to, to send Falco to the CNCF originally. Great question. <laughs> this this is a really great question. Basically, in uh, 2016, around 2016, when uh, Sysdig created the uh, Falco, mm -hmm. uh, did that to address the need of uh, a cloud native runtime security. Mm -hmm. There weren't a tool about that. Yeah. And uh, since uh, Sysdig has uh, it's an own root in the open source because our founder was also one uh, author of the Wireshark, as, as we mentioned. Uh, it was uh, immediately obvious that uh, an open source tool that is about cloud native runtime security should be go under the CNCF, the cloud native mm -hmm. version. And we did it. Yeah. yeah. That's more. It's really an ordinary, in for my personal uh, journey, basically, I was SRE before. Mm -hmm. I was one of the oldest members of the Falco community, yep. so I used Falco in production for years and for years. I did some work up in the middle of the night with my uncles. Um, and after years being an open source maintainer of my free time mm -hmm. and doing talks, webinars, or tree, uh, live streams or else, Sysdig proposed me after years, you could do that as your daily job, as your daily yeah. job. <laughs> stop doing that on your weekends and, and evenings. Yeah. Let us pay for you to do that because we are already do, doing that for free for years. So I st it started like that. This is why we are really attached to the open source, to the community uh, all around us. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just a reminder that we're, we're so dependent on unpaid maintainers. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of amazing. Like we are how pretty lucky to be paid to maintain a such open source tool, to be honest. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you, that, or problems that had to be solved along the way? It's a long story. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, as you already told, uh, we uh, donated the Falco to the CNCF in 2018 as an sandbox project. Then, uh, since uh, it uh, grew a lot and there was a lot of adoption, two years later it moved to the incubation level in 2020. And until then, it was, I would say, pretty easy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not so much, but pretty easy. By the way, I entered, uh, I joined the project around that time, mm -hmm. around the incubation, and uh, we started focusing on technical maturity because we already have all the features. We yeah. just need to make Falco rock solid. Mm -hmm. And we worked a lot on, on that, and when we felt ready, we applied for the graduation. 
At that point, we started a, a process uh, uh, with the technical oversight committee. Mm-hmm. Uh, we go through a due diligence, uh, a third part security audit that was challenging, but was was uh, a lot uh, a lot, a lot interesting. Uh, we received a lot of feedback from the TOC that we addressed. Uh, this was uh, a bit tiring, but it was uh, really really nice. The only maybe obstacle that we had is was that uh, this process lasted too long. Mm. And we didn't we uh, didn't expect that, and uh, for this reason we also worked together with the TOC. We uh, give them feedback that helped them to streamline their process that for the benefit of the whole community. We are really proud uh, about this. Finally, the very last roadblock was uh, during the last year, because uh, uh, the basically the community discovered that it was uh, a licensing issue with the code that run on the kernel, because the code that run on the kernel is uh, it must be GPL licensed, and the charter of the CNCF did not allow it formally, okay? Ooh. So, but this was not not just a Falco issue, it was a, an issue of all pro- projects that used the EBPF for kernel model. And we worked uh, together uh, with the CNCF, with the legal committee to overcome this. It took, I don't know, like six months or more, but at the end we did it. And in February we finally got it. So it was a really, really, really long uh, journey, but a really, really exciting journey. How is Falco compatible with Kubernetes? So Falco has always been uh, compatible with Kubernetes, uh, and if you think about it, uh, Falco was created in 2016 when Kubernetes was at its first versions, and uh, Falco loved Kubernetes for its entire journey. So there is, uh, from since its inception, for every Falco event, uh, every potentially security relevant event, you can get rich context uh, from your Kubernetes cluster. So every deployment, every uh, node, uh, and every pod metadata, pieces of metadata, you can see them in your event. And since then, Fal- uh, Falco support uh, for Kubernetes has evolved a lot. Uh, of course, today, one of our preferred installation ways is via, via Helm chart, which is complete and install its many features. And also, uh, recently, we have uh, improved a lot support for Kubernetes uh, because the clusters that you see in 2024 are much different than the clusters that you saw back then. And so we have uh, uh, rewrote a part of the Kubernetes support uh, to be even more scalable and even more future-proof uh, than uh, they were before. Now, over two years ago, we introduced plugins in, from, in Falco. It started to collect only syscalls. We, we mm. came from that point. And now we are able, as long as we have the correct plugin for that, mm. to ingest any kind of events we may have, from mm. cloud events to big transactions, any, anything. Mm. So we developed plugins to collect c- Kubernetes audit logs directly from the control plane or from the uh, log uh, storages for, of the cloud providers. Mm-hmm. So you can trigger alerts based on the syscalls, like we did for, since the beginning, but also based on what are the requests made to the control plane uh, or other uh, integrations. What are some of the best use cases of Falco that you, that you So have? there's many use cases. Uh, <laughs> I can think of a lot, uh, and we're discussing actually many use cases that we didn't even think about uh, here at KubeCon. But uh, some of the most common ones and some of the ones that we like a lot uh, are, of course, uh, security monitoring, so being alerted on security relevant uh, events, uh, and that works uh, on several levels. So we have talked about the kernel level, so the machine, the node, the cluster, and the uh, cloud infrastructure, because uh, as uh, we were mentioning, uh, via the plugin system, you can monitor your entire cloud infrastructure, including cloud accounts and other things. But also, you can use Falco for other So rather than only having security relevant events, you can take many more events to build the log and the history of of what happened in your infrastructure. So you can, uh, upon an incident or an investigation, you can take uh, a deeper look uh, and understand what Falco saw during those events. And these are the most used use cases. And then there are so many, and you can discover those in our blog or around you. One, One thing that with security, alerts that that um, SREs complain about sometimes or is that um, oh, they talk about alert fatigue like they're you know that you, everything is a crisis <laughs> like and not everything that's wrong is catastrophic you know um, what is there something how does Falco handle that or does it 
Falco allows you to, allows flexibility for you to uh, customize the rules and filter out the noise that you might see. Uh, Falco uh, by itself uh, does not try to hide things from you because uh, uh, we think uh, we want to put security above all else, so we want yeah. to uh, let the user be in control. But there's also very promising projects uh, that use machine learning to try and uh, get m even more information uh, from the from uh, your events uh, uh, and uh, to try and reduce the noise. But in general, Falco is open source is as transparent as possible and gives the user a lot of flexibility to tune their um, to tune their rules uh, and to get the alerts that they actually need. What's next for the project? Oh wow! Well, uh, <laughs> since uh, Falco already reached uh, 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 maturity level, a stable maturity level, we are basically focusing on two things. One thing is basically extending the core functionality of Falco. For example, we are introducing a lot of options to customize the rules or even the format of the alerts. Mm. But also, most importantly, we are extending the syntax that is used to describe our rules. For example, recently we introduced the base name of base name transformer. Basically, it's like a, a code program functioning. You give a path to this transformer and it returns just the file name. This is really important for security detection mm. because you don't care sometimes from the whole path. You just mm. need the... Okay. Yeah. On the other side, we are focusing on the Falco ecosystem with plugins, as we mentioned. We are extending a lot the plugin support. We are creating a new plugin but also we are providing SDK for developing plugin. Mm -hmm. Recently, we introduced the Rust SDK for writing yeah. plugins. So now you can write a Falco plugin in Rust. Mm -hmm. We already had the, the Go one, the C++ one, and others. And uh, last but not least, uh, we introduced Talon, and here is the yeah, author. Two months ago, we released a new project called Falco Talon. Basically, this is a no-code, tailor-made response engine for Falco. Mm. So the missing part in our organization or ecosystem was a reaction. So we, we have a lot of things to detection, for the detections, for the notifications, for the visualization, visualization sorry. But the missing part, and people, our adopters were asking that for a long time. Yeah. So we introduced something called Talon, and basically you write rules like you do for Falco, but to correlate Falco alerts with actions to fire, to remediate to, the, to these alerts. Once again, in, we are trying to do in real time, or at, in a short time as possible. How can people get involved in the project? You can reach us easily on Kubernetes Slack uh, mm -hmm. in the Falco channel. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, for KubeCon, we are there at the, mm -hmm. at the <laughs> showcase pavilion for Project Pavilion for the our CNCF landscape. Mm -hmm. On falco.org, you wow. will find everything in the community uh, section uh, mm -hmm. for the community call because uh, we are we are a CNCF project, so we have a weekly community call to talk with the adopters, with the, all the maintainers about what are the uh, trending topics around Falco, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much uh, how to reach them on LinkedIn, of course, but directly not for the, the project. Anything else you want to say about about what's new, with, what's, what's happening? What's I just want to add that Falco is not just about technology, but also about people, mm -hmm. because we have an awesome community, and I want just to invite everyone to join our community, just to say A <laughs> and talk about the Falco, whatever they want. It yeah. is so great to see uh, people that use Falco that stop by our uh, our yeah. booth over there yeah. and just say how happy they are using yeah. Falco. <laughs> it's very rewarding for us. Always a surprise when you have a customers who say, "Oh, I'm using Falco for years." And okay, what is your company? I'm not your company. I'm a governmental uh, governmental institution. <laughs> uh, for, uh, sorry, it's really hard to say. But yeah, so it's always fun to, to hear that. That's great, and it's good to hear that people appreciate your your hard work. Yeah. So. Um, I think that's a wrap. Uh, we we want to thank um, Luca and Leonardo and Tama for, for joining us today uh, from Sysdig. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And, thank you. Uh, and thank you uh, we'd like to thank the Cloud Native Computing Foundation for sponsoring today's uh, conversation. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. This has been Heather Joslin from the New Stack Makers. And uh, we'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.